Opposition parties continue to pepper the government with questions about that timeline for a vaccine. The Conservatives have tabled a motion demanding specific details. For more on this, I'm joined by Steve McKinnon, Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Public Services and Procurement, Conservative Health Critic Michelle Rumpel Garner, and NDP Health Critic Don Davies. Welcome back to the program, all of you. Steve McKinnon, you know, I'm going to start with you. Uh, we are hearing reports now, uh, we should say, uh, a couple of sources not entirely confirmed that Pfizer is only going to be able to deliver half of the vaccines it hoped this year. Do we know if this could delay Canada's access to the Pfizer vaccine? Look, we've been consistent all along. We've said that uh, Canadians can expect to see vaccines roll out in the first quarter of next year. Uh, we're obviously preparing uh, assiduously, feverishly across the country, hundreds of public servants, military officials, public health officials, medical professionals are working around the clock to make sure that when those vaccines arrive in Canada, then we will start deploying them. We know how anxious people are. We know how people, how keen people are to see this process begin. And uh, you can be sure, uh, uh, Catherine, that we are uh, uh, aware of that urgency and acting upon it. My question was not so much about the urgency, but about the potential impact. But seizing on what you were saying about timeline, Steve McKinnon, uh, Alberta Premier Jason Kenney says his province expects to receive doses by January 4th. Can you confirm that timeline? Look, we're having conversations with provinces all of the time. Uh, Albertans, uh, Canadians generally can expect that, uh, again, those vaccines will start rolling out in the first quarter of next year. January 4th, Steve McKinnon. The, That's the, the date the Premier has put out there. Is he right? Again, well, again, uh, we, we collaborate very, very closely and communicate very closely with provincial premiers and provinces. Uh, up to them what they uh, wish to share, but what we've always been clear about is Q1 next year, Canadians can expect to see vaccines rolling out in a coordinated way across the country. Okay, Michelle Rumper garner I want to bring you into the conversation. You have been saying that the federal government has no plan, you and your party, when it comes to vaccine rollout. Today we heard from Major General Denis Fortin. He explained uh, how delivery of the Pfizer vaccine will work as compared to other vaccines, that a dry run rehearsal will be done in every province and territory on Monday, that by December 14th all provinces and territories need to have identified their vaccine distribution site, that, he says, everything will be ready before Christmas. Would you now say that Canada has a plan? Well, the government's representative wasn't able to answer some pretty basic questions that you just asked about delivery dates and number of doses that we can be expecting over certain periods of time. Without that information, it's really hard to evaluate um, what the situation in COVID looks like for our country. And that has huge societal and economic impacts. Is it reasonable, uh, though? I, I mean, I, I appreciate your point about target dates. And you know that journalists are asking those questions themselves over and over. But can you continue saying there is no plan when in a matter of days there will be dry runs done across the country that are coordinated by the military? What, what a plan boils down to is any Canadian being able to understand when they are getting the vaccine. And in what order, right? And I don't. There's not a single Canadian who can say that right now. So there isn't a plan. And if you contrast with that with, you know, the United Kingdom or the United States, there's details there. So I don't understand why Canada, as a G7 country, is so far behind. I'm proud of the work that opposition parties have done to push the government in this regard. But I mean, we're we can't at this point in the game have the federal government contradicting the provincial governments. There needs to be details. And then, you know, to your point with the announcement today of Pfizer cutting back, what does that mean? If we're not going to be able as a country to get a majority of Canadians vaccinated, the cabinet, Trudeau's cabinet keeps changing dates, guessing on when that's going to happen, then we need to be talking about plan B because sustained economic lockdowns have a major impact on our society, be it mental health, job loss, families being separated. And we have to start talking about this. This, this is just, it feels like panic. It feels like a lot of uncertainty that Canadians I, can't afford right now. And I, that's why we put forward a motion today. I think it's being supported by the, all the opposition parties that are compelling the government to give Canadians this information before Christmas. I do want to say you talked about changing dates 
I view, I view it as a lack of specificity. I mean, the government has essentially said the first quarter they're going to start arriving. Yes, at times that has been January that's been the first quarter. But I really want to bring Don Davies into this, who I know shares some of your concerns, and ask you, uh, NEP Don Davies, the news that we're hearing today out of Pfizer, the fact that this year they won't be able to scale up in the way that they hope. We have heard from independent experts that part of the challenge in pinning down a date is attempting to scale up this new technology, that there are just a certain number of unknowns. Uh, does that not explain the difficulty in, in giving a specific date? Does that not satisfy you, Don Davies? Well, I think it explains it partially. Look, look, I know that vaccine science is complex. Mm. Uh, I know that there's some information that we just don't know. And, and frankly, I know that there's some information that depends on approval of vaccines by Health Canada. That, that's all very understandable. But I do think, though, at this point, uh, on December 3rd, uh, with a, a government that says that they're ready to roll out vaccines as early as four weeks from now, that there should be more details released to Canadians by now. Specifically, uh, like, give me an example of a specific detail beyond the date, because I, I you know, we're probably not done uh, on that point with Steve McKinnon, but we've talked about that one a lot. Give me another detail that you would like to hear from the federal government that you have not heard yet. Well, um, uh, for one thing, I'd like them to uh, conclusively establish what the order of vaccination is. Other countries have done that. They've hinted around it. We have the, the National uh, Committee on Immunization has produced an interim suggestion. Is it but not ultimately up to the provinces, Don Davies? I mean, the Prime Minister said the other day they all want to be on the same page, but that is ultimately at the discretion of the provinces and territories, is it not? Well, this is part of the problem is this whack-a-mole uh, issue that the federal government, they claim to have the best portfolio in the world and, and they're on top of things, but whenever there's a difficult question or a specific, they'll bounce it off to the provinces. Surely the federal but, government with a national committee on immunization. But it's a good uh, jurisdiction they, as well. I mean, they have a national committee, but you don't, want the fed, to, you don't want the federal government deciding this for the provinces and territories, do you? No, but they should conclusively give their recommendations by now. Another thing is, you know, they're in full control over the contracts that were signed. Um, we should know precisely how many vaccination doses are going to be coming in January, February and March, because it's a matter of contract. You know, th these are set down somewhere. And I, for the life of me, can't understand the reluctance mm -hmm. of the federal government just to disclose that information. I'm not looking for sensitive commercial information, but surely Canadians have a right to know at this point and should be trusted to know basically what is it that the contracts entitle us to receive, understanding that there may be changes to that. Look, I trust Canadians and they need to know they're optimistic and Canadians are excited about the, the vaccines that are going to be coming. So I think it's time that we gave them some basic information. And, uh, you know, like your first question, Mr. McKinnon, I mean, we just can't get a straight answer from them. Okay, uh, Michelle Rumpelgarner, I want to bring you back in, and Steve McKinnon, as you might imagine, we're going to wrap up with you. You wanted to make a point, Ms. Rumpelgarner? Yeah, just with regard to the the order of precedence, to, to, to build on what Don was just saying, I mean, is the federal government going to be distributing to the provinces on a per capita basis? And if not, you know, what criteria are they using now that we know that Pfizer is seeing its doses slashed? What does that mean for the order of precedence? In fact, Dr. Tam today in the press conference uh, or in the technical briefing talked about how the there are elements of that that need to be refined. So as the need becomes more acute, like the federal government needs to have input in this because they're the ones who are procuring and distributing it. And the last thing that we want to see is negative public health outcomes because we haven't prioritized appropriately or regions mm -hmm. being pitted against each other yeah. because there hasn't been that Perfect. clear education. No. Oh. So, Mr. McKinnon, I'm going to bring you in in a moment. I do have one more question for Ms. Rempel-Garner. I would like to ask you, Ms. Rempel-Garner, whether you believe that, quote, COVID-19 vaccination is effectively human experimentation. Is that true? <laughs> we have a wonderful regulator here in Canada. No, that it's a yes or no question. You know, we have a regulator that does this. You're forcing me into a question when our party has been pushing, we've been the ones pushing the government for a vaccine. The, the terminology uh, comes from a, a vaccine, petition being sponsored by a member a of your own party. I didn't, I didn't put those words credit, but on a piece of paper. What I can say for the, as a health critic for the Conservative Party of Canada is I am proud to fight for the right of every Canadian to have a vaccine and move out of this crisis. And that's what I'm proud to do. It's what our party leader is proud to do. And we're also, you know, very confident that the regulators at Health Canada are going to do their job. But we need details out of the government. We need them to be giving us these planned details that we've been talking about. Today. As a health critic, don't you think you have some responsibility to dispel the idea that vaccines are human experimentation? That's what I just sat here and did.
Okay, Mr. McKinnon, we are going to wrap up with you, and I do want to ask you again about the date. We keep asking and asking and asking. What is the date that we are going to start to receive vaccines? And I do have to ask you, does the government just not know? Are, are you ultimately telling us there are too many variables and you don't know when these vaccines are going to arrive in Canada? Well, of course, the first thing, and we cannot, cannot pay lip service to it, is the fact that we are going to have a regulatory approval. No one prejudges that, and there's no politician, and there is no government that can give any kind of assurance about Dr. What Sharma the said seven to, to ten days on the current mm-hmm. this morning. So we, we have a pretty okay, good ballpark. Well, yeah. The, the prefix of her name should give you every indication as to uh, her authority to speak on the matter. Uh, the fact is that we have a regulatory process that will be rolling out. The U.S. has not even approved a vaccine yet. And one, one of the things that I think we're establishing here, Catherine, is that we're going to be very clear about our communications. You saw today a technical briefing, a very long one, for about logistics, about science and all of this. And I do want to come back on the earlier point, because one of the Very key quickly, things sir, we're out of is, time. is crisp communication. And you, we have an opposition here who asks us lots of questions, but won't answer a very simple one. We, what well, is she going I, to I, tell Derek I think Derek we made Sloan? that point, Mr. McKinnon, and I... Derek Sloan? We, I think uh, we made that point, Mr. McKinnon. We have a lot of questions for you. Like you know? know when we get, I would like to know when everybody needs to get a vaccine. And hey, that's what we're going to continue to hold. Folks, we are out of time. We're out of time. We are happy to discuss all these issues on the program again and have all three of you back. I appreciate your time today very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Catherine. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.